Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. It's been a while since I've done any videos and truth be told, I've just been in some type of weird funk when it comes to the videos. I'm still actively collecting and if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see some of the new stuff coming in, um, albeit at a much slower pace, but here's some of the knives that um, only one, well, two have a video, but we'll talk about it, but I wanted to share with you guys my list. Um, since the beginning of the year, I have been beating the drum of reduce and refine, perhaps ad nauseum at this point. And you guys are welcome to tell me if that's the case. But these were some of the ones that were on my list to which I wanted to refine. Now, the reduction part, it hasn't happened. I have a table full of knives behind me that I've been needing to put up for sale, but I just... It's difficult. Um, I don't really like selling things. It's it's uh, it's much funner to buy. Um, so I've just been stalling that process. Although I need to get on it here before I get busy with the holidays. Anyhow, these were part of a list that I started. I think I made the list last year, right after Blade. And that was uh, Blade Show 2018. Um, I made a list of of knives that I really wanted to have in a more kind of defined collection. Um, up until this point, and perhaps, you know, at the fault of the channel or because of the channel, I've collected or bought at a very, very rapid pace. I've had a lot of things go through my hands. I've, I've retained a lot of the pieces, but um, a lot of them have gone too. And, you know, obviously you have to have new stuff coming in to make new content for the channel. And these days I'm just kind of slowing down, taking a step back and trying to decide what do I really want? Not what do I think will make interesting or good content, although I still have some videos of those that I need to do, but these are pieces that I really wanted just for me. And perhaps it's because of that that a lot of these don't have videos yet. Um, the ones in front of me I think are so good that they deserve my full undivided attention if I'm going to put them in front of the camera and make a video. And I'm, again, I'm in a weird funk and I'm just not feeling like I'm in a spot to do that. And I don't want to put out what I consider would be, you know, bad content or, um, you know, not giving it my full attention when I have such admiration for the, the craftsmanship and the quality and the design and the construction, the, the details, everything about these I love. So let me show you guys the list that I've been working on, um, I mean, at least a year and a half now. And most of these are actually checked off. So because we're low tech and I don't have a Patreon, we're just going to look at my phone here. But this was the list. Um, and a few things were added to it. I'm not quite sure if I still want a Hawk Orbit. But anyways, the Grant and Gavin Hawk Deadlock right here. The Beg Knives Astio here, the Jason Guthrie Scout we've got here, the Clyde Chalinor Viper I have here, the Philip Georget Front Flipper. Now this one is, is kind of a cop-out to an extent, but this is the Custom Knife Factory collaboration with Philip Georget, and it, it, this one is so true to the original that it, it's kind of, you know, I checked it off my list essentially. Um, now, again, when Custom Knife Factory comes out with the smaller version of this, the, the 520, um, that will fill the void completely. As much as I love this piece, it is quite large, and with all the zirconium accents, it is quite heavy. So, you know, I checked it off my list for all intents and purposes, but because they're coming out with the smaller version, uh, December-ish of 2019 here, that will be the one that I have to have, and that one will be kind of a bloodbath to get. So we'll see uh, the Rockstead tie down here, um, a piece that I very much enjoy, and a watch, the Ocean, uh, the Monta Ocean King with the black dial, which was on my checklist. So um, again, the only one that's still missing is a new Koenig Arius Custom. I have been in talks with Bill for uh, maybe two years since I went to a shop and I, I uploaded the shop video. So um, yeah, um, but I do have, I, I mean, I, again, I don't want to be ungrateful. I do have this Gen 1 custom that he did with the 
orange peeled handles, the polished stonewash blade. Uh, this was the first one he ever did. I had to fight him to do it. And then he discovered he liked it. It's got the Timascus backspacer. Um, and a lot of a lot of time and energy whoops, went into this one. So uh, this is Gen 1. I think now he's technically on his fourth generation. And so I'm just very much looking forward to um, getting a new custom Koenig Arius at some point. Again, it's... Uh, I've been bothering him about it for years now, so we'll see when and if. Um, other than that, uh, the Grant and Gavin Hawk Orbit. Again, not not sure on that. Um, a few other ones that I do want to add to my list, though, and that perhaps I will add to the list, are going to be something from Salmonero, um, a very, very noteworthy custom maker. And then perhaps uh, I, I would like something from Derek Monroe, um, not sure which model, but I, I really like his work, and I think there was another one on my list, but it's escaping me right now, so I should probably just add those to the list, but, and you know, again, this list is not exhaustive, but at least it gives me direction, it gives me something to, to work on, to focus on, and as I move out, other pieces that perhaps don't get enough pocket time, or perhaps I've acquired simply for you know, the purpose of creating content, um, it's going to make way for pieces that are more um, long-term, very personal to me, very specific to me. So I, I've been rambling for about six minutes, and I I know, oh, I'm, I want me to shut up and show you guys some of the knives, and you want me to shut up and so you, show you some of the knives. So uh, Grant and Gavin Hawk Deadlock, Carbon Fiber. We've got the flamed uh, titanium accents all throughout. Uh, we've got the double-edged blade here, or the dagger grind, and it has this really cool pocket clip that's spring-loaded. Works beautifully. You know, it's, it's to me, functionally, the best out-the-front automatic ever created. And I think this one was batch 6, and there were no changes from batch 5 to batch 6, so batch 5 onward. And again, this, this knife absolutely deserves a more in-depth video, but... Um, I waited a, a long time, arguably, uh, from the time this came out to the time I got one, and I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, this one I got a couple months ago. I did the down payment at Blade Show. This one I did pick up at Blade Show 2019, and again, it is the Bag Knives Osteo out of their California Custom Shop. Um, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, just, I love everything about it, so... They are in the process of making more of these right now. They just uploaded some kind of work in progress videos. So um, I this is one that very expensive, but I would absolutely recommend that if you're interested in this piece that um, perhaps you hit up Mark um, or Mattia sooner rather than later because they won't be making this model forever. Um, Again, I'll get this. This needs a video. This needs a detailed look. This needs more information. But you know, they're they're focusing more on the the kitchen knives now, the custom kitchen knives. And so, um, you know, I don't really know that the the production life cycle of this is going to be too long. Uh, this was from Blade Show 2019 as well. The Clyde Chalinor uh, Viper. Um, I think Francois Nell collaborated on design, but I, I think it's arguably his best. Uh, design yet it's 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 slender fits beautifully in the hand it's it's a lot of knife and a very small package as you guys can see and it's you know obviously a stunning look this one's a bit different because it does run on washers and it does have stronger lock bar pressure um, than some of his other models but he calls this the uh, what did he say like the South African version or you know in his cool accent he says this is how they like them you know down in South Africa on washers with uh, lots of lock bar pressure, so um, very cool. He only brought six of these to blade. He's currently bringing, you know, a lot the the CNC aspect um, of his knives in house before he had a, a, a friend doing some of the CNC work for him. It's all coming in house, so the updates from him have been a little bit far and few between, but he is still working. Um, obviously, here we have the Jason Guthrie Scout. Exceptional piece, the lava carbon fiber. Um, I had him do the, so it's, you know, like a bronze lava, and I had him do bronze raindrops on the other side to tie in 
you know, the color scheme a bit more cohesively, and then it has the um, harpoon drop point blade, and he doesn't do a stone wash. He either does Damasteel or a hand rub, so I opted for the hand rub, and it's uh, what an incredible user. Uh, as some of you guys may or may not know, his knives actually run on Teflon washers, and there are only two guys who I would buy a knife from on Teflon washers. We have Jason Guthrie and Jesse Jarrows, and it's... Um, the smoothness is incredible. It'll make you wreath well. Again, a lot of people may not be f fond of Teflon, but the way he does it is he brings out the absolute best. You guys already know about the Koenig Arius. Um, again, this is the 523 collaboration with Custom Knife Factory. Incredible knife. Very, very true to the customs. Uh, it's such high fidelity between the customs and this production that it's uh, incredible. So I, I wish, you know, the, the, it's really cool they use zirconium, but zirconium is not my favorite material. A lot of fingerprints. I'm sure the FBI could pull my fingerprint right off this video with how well it's taking to this. Not that they care about me, but um, again, not my favorite choice of materials, but it's cool that they use zirconium on a production knife. And this one does have a video, unlike the rest. And last but not least, the Rockstead Tay Tai. This one is done in the, oh shoot, I don't remember the blade steel. Um, they only use two blade steels, ZDP-189 and uh, some other acronym uh, for this one, but uh, this is the um, polished DLC coated blade. And The reason they DLC coat it is because this is a tool steel. It's not very stainless, and so um, the, the DLC coating is, is purely functional. But, you know, the, the polished finish plus DLC coated, I mean, it should be pretty safe. But uh, Rockstead makes incredible knives. Uh, again, not cheap, but um, absolutely incredible. And it took me a, a long time to warm up to the value proposition of Rockstead knives. Um, took me a long time, but uh, very happy I did. And, you know, again, it was just kind of part of my journey. Um, you know, this model runs around 1700 and picked it up from Blade HQ. Good people there, but uh, absolutely love it. Uh, one of my top three, along with the Big Knives Osteo and the Grant and Gavin Hawk Deadlock. Uh, another news again, not to ramble too much, but this is the good stuff. Um, Grant and Gavin Hawk, you know, initially they tried to work with a, a manufacturer who was near them, who was doing a lot of production pieces for other people and companies and they've now switched gear I think they posted today that they now have three CNC machines and maybe like nine employees so they're bringing um, all of their production in-house well they're having to focus on the deadlocks because of us and the the crazy demand but you know perhaps at some point they'll bring the orbit production in-house or or other new models or designs but um, I'm really excited to see them kind of taking over their their production, in control of their destiny, and producing just incredible pieces. So I think that's very exciting. Um, and all of you know, all of the makers and all the people that I've talked about uh, certainly deserve your attention, and you should follow them. So anyways, guys, the, the, the passion's still here. The, the, the buying is still here, uh, unfortunately. The selling is, is not here, and it needs to be. Um, but anyways, hopefully I get on my funk, and because I've got so many knives that that need videos but also deserve videos and especially these ones deserve my my the best that I can offer again you might look at my best and think it's trash but you know I have to be true to myself in some extent so anyways I'm done rambling thanks so much for watching guys again I've I've still I'm still uploading daily content on Instagram I'll have a link there in the description box below um, comments or questions let me know I've had a few people say that they were interested in and having me do live streams again and if there's enough interest I can I can certainly have to figure out how to do some of that but uh, yeah lots more to come I just need to get out of my funk and do it uh, thanks for all the support thanks for watching see you guys